please welcome our keynote speaker, Principal Baruti Kafele. Good morning, good morning. Before I get started, Alex, come on out here. Get this photo. I asked Alex to come back out because it's the Alex's of the world as to why I wake up in the morning. See, I'm convinced that the young men that we're struggling with, grappling with, hoping for, that's right here. It's epitomized right here. It's just a matter of having the right support, the right structure, the right love around the young men. When I look at Alex, I met him yesterday, and I asked him how old he was, 20. When I was 20, there's no way in the world I'd be on this stage. <laughs> and even if you got me on the stage, there's no way in the world I could have delivered a message. This man has gone places. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. Thank you. Right. So anytime I see these young men, I don't care what they've done. I'm going to do my part in making sure that I acknowledge you for what you have done. So I said, why not have him come back out here and get a second ovation? Because that's the fire that he's going to need to keep on going to wherever it is that he's trying to get to. So you keep doing your thing. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, now, before you leave, I, I feel like some fire coming on. So I got to take this for me and I got, I, I got to get rid of this tie. Too. Right, smooth, man. I'll take it. Yeah. I'll take it. Appreciate that. You can just no throw that down somewhere. I got you. I got you. Appreciate you. Going. <laughs> there's, there's all sorts of emotions in me right now. I'm getting ready to lose it, so just work with me. Because it's, I'm that passionate about this work. Let me, let me take you on a journey. I got to get Alex out of me. Let me, let, me, let me take you on a journey. You see, the, the title I'm using is My School, A Better School, because I lead it. But I typically say it like this. Is my school a better school because I lead it? That's not putting anybody in isolation, and I'm not talking just to the principal. I'm talking to every leader in here. Is it a better school because you're there? Are teachers better because you're there? Do students have a higher probability for success because you're there? Are parents engaged because you're there? Is community supportive? because you're there. Is your school a better school because you lead it? I want to take you on a journey. I want you to go back in time and think about when you were in the classroom. Most of you, probably 99%, 98, 99% of you were classroom teachers at one point. And I want you to go back to that, that, that place and think about when you were in that classroom. It is obvious to me it is evident to me that each and every one of you, you were taking care of business when you were in that classroom. Because if you weren't taking care of business, you wouldn't be sitting in these seats now as leaders. So in that classroom, you were doing your thing. And that translated into young people soaring. So young people, the children that were, in, were assigned to you were in a better place because you were their teacher. So here you were, you, you were observing your success with children taking them from point A to point B. And then it hit you at some point. You said, 
I can do this at another level. You said, I can lead a school. It's in me. And when you said that, you kind of played with it for a little while. It marinated within you. And, 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 and it was churning, and you kept saying, I could do this. You started watching your principal. And as your principal moved, you were making decisions as to, or, or thinking about the decisions that you would make based on the decisions that your principal was making. Would I have done it that way? Would I have done it this way? Would I have done it that way? How would I have raised the achievement levels? How would I have dealt with that situation? How would I have dealt with that interaction? How would I have dealt with that conflict? And then you went on and got your credential. But the thing is, when it hits you that you wanted to do this, you didn't say, and when I get that position, well, we'll see what happens. You didn't, you didn't say that. You said, when I get that position, man, them kids are going to heights they never imagined. You said that. You didn't doubt yourself. So you went on and got your credentials, ultimately landed a position, and here you are. I want to remind each and every one of you, when the days get tough, when the days become challenging, never lose sight of that younger, innocent version of yourselves that said, I'm going to change the world. See, when I wake up every morning, to do the work that I do now, my mind says, I'm going to change the world. And as naive as that may sound, doesn't matter to me. That's the level in which I operate. Last night, I stayed up late. I got up at 4.30. I didn't need to get up until 6.30. But I was so fired up that I just wanted the day to start. So here we are. So I'm saying to you, as you move forward, you got to see that school as being this great school, that phenomenal school, because you're the leader of it. So you'll notice the mirror there. And I use a mirror all the time. I have about, I have about 100 presentations in my laptop, and there's not one presentation without the mirror. Because in the world of sports, they watch something called game film at the conclusion of a game. And I've been watching the NBA Finals attentively, and I've been paying particular attention to the post-game interviews and the post-game press conferences. And one of, the, one, of, one of the standards in those interviews and press conferences, you always hear the athletes say, well, we're going to go back and look at film. Because by going back and looking at film, studying film, analyzing film, dissecting film, it enables them to develop a strategy to overcome whatever weaknesses, deficiencies were detected by way of watching the film. But it also gives them an opportunity to capitalize on that which worked. So I'm saying to us, we got to watch our film. And I'm asking you the question, how often? Do you engage in the study of your own film? How do you take your game to a higher level of accomplishment if you don't spend the time analyzing your film? But your film is not from a camera. Your film is the mirror. That intense self-reflection, that intense self-assessment, and then ultimately, that self-adjustment. I've been fired up for the past several days. I'm on this 50-city run, and every time I step on one of these platforms, I got to get it right. So last night, I get to the room about four, and I'm just running in my mind what, what, what this is going to look like this morning. And I turn in like whatever it was, midnight, 12, 30, whatever it was, and then get up at 4.30. And at 4.30, I said, I'm not turning on the TV. I don't know what's going on in the world right now. But I said, I'm just going to go through my film until 6.30. And then I'm going to get ready. But as a principal, I led the same lifestyle 
I got to study my film. I got to run the DVD in my mind to look at what I did yesterday to see if yesterday's performance was optimal leaving, leading into today. So I'm letting the DVD run and I'm assessing me. What about that conversation with that young man yesterday? What about that conversation with that young lady yesterday? What about that interaction with that parent yesterday? What about when you were in that classroom? What kind of feedback did you give that teacher and how soon did you give it? I gotta run that film. So that when I come back tomorrow, I'm a better leader than I was yesterday, yesterday because that's the goal. I just wanna be a better leader than I was the day prior. So, but the question says, in what ways does my leadership inspire school-wide excellence? You heard Alex's story, and when he left out of here, he hit some rough road, right? Went the GED route initially. See, I look at schools, and I say, man, what is it about the school that the youngster says, I can't wait to get back tomorrow. And I don't mean that high-flying youngster. I'm not talking about that youngster right now. I'm talking about that youngster that doesn't want to be there. I'm talking about that youngster that says, what does this have to do with my life? What is it about your leadership that that youngster says, man, I can't wait. I want to be there because it's something about being in that vicinity, being in the presence of that principal, being with my teacher, being with my counselor, that I feel like I can fly. I'm thinking about myself as I speak to you and I was thinking about myself as I interacted with Alex. 